Good afternoon, everybody. This is Matt McGall with the High School Football Show brought to you by 330 to go. I am here today again, ready for another interview because as we had mentioned, we've got Elliot and Tomage taking on one another this week. We've already heard from Coach from Tomage. Now we are happy to be joined by Coach Dorio. How are you feeling today as you are getting prepared for our game of the week? Good, good. Thanks for having me on, Matt. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. Well, Coach, I, I know right off the bat, everybody's now tuning in. All the Elliot super fans are watching, but I got to get the elephant out of the room. The background of Heinz Ward. I don't know if we're going to win much with this, Coach. You're right. a Cleveland Nation, so we're yeah. going to give you a pass, and I had to give you a rough time because as a Browns fan, I'd be remiss if I didn't make you feel I, awkward. But I, I get I get that a lot. I'm actually a diehard Giants fan, but I keep all the Giants stuff in the other room. Heinz Ward signed jersey gets put back here. Bad, bad by me because people give me a lot of crap for it. Exactly. No, they, they don't. So, Coach, last week you guys went down. You took on Indian Valley. Probably learned a lot about your team. Um, little ups and downs throughout the whole thing. What was your message to your team after the game as you said, hey, we played this. We've worked all summer. It's time to keep, you know what I mean? It's the next step. You know, turn the page. Let's get ready for week two. What was some of your message that you were giving to your team? Yeah, so a so big thing for us and even going into it was – you know, I think we had, and I harped on this all offseason, right? We probably had four or five kids with true varsity starting experience, right? You you get some rotational guys, you get, you know, a little bit of experience. But, you know, even talking with Coach Lancaster at Indian Valley, right, he made the comment to me before the game, hey, a lot of new faces for you guys. Um, you know, we basically turned over 10 of our 11 starters on offense going into this year, a large chunk of the defense. Um, again, a lot of kids that were excited about coming up, but, we are nine seniors, very sophomore, junior heavy, even freshman heavy starting on a Friday night and in an exciting way. They are extremely talented and have every ability to start on a Friday night. I think at any other school I'd, I've been at, they'd be considered to be Friday night starters. However, when you go into your first Friday night, we talked about this all year long of, hey, the lights come on. It's going to be the first time for a lot of you, right? We, we need to kind of to break into that and, and shake some of the, that off. Um, it, it's different than, than playing JV games or youth games or middle school games or practice. Right. So, um, you know, that, that was a big one for us. Let's, let's get out there. Now on the flip side, Indian Valley is a team that two years ago was in the state final fours for their division. Uh, last year, they were very good. This talking to their AD, talking with coach Lancaster, like this group for this year, and next year is in their opinion, one of the best teams they've had in the last, however many years, right? So not the ideal first opponent when you're trying to kind of break into some experience for those kids. But at the same time, you get to preach, hey, you might have just saw the best team on your schedule. You might have seen, at the very least, a very, very talented team that you can kind of see now if you're new to this. Hey, that's what high-level varsity Friday night football looks like, right? Yeah. So that, that was our big message from there. And now, hey, now let, let's learn from that. That loss can sting. But if you turn it into a learning opportunity and some lesson, we're going to be all right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's it's a, it's a hard thing to be able to kind of continuously push the same thing over and over again because sometimes you can lose that belief. And as a coach, that's the hardest thing. You don't want to ever lose that. So it sounds a lot like you are taking a lot of these underclassmen and you're building this kind of idea of what you see Elliot football to become because this is your second year. So even yourself, you're new to this. But the way that you just spoke there, Coach, I'll tell you right now, I, I, I got you as a seasoned vet because that's exactly how you, you need to come back and tell your team because it's a long season. It's a long grind. And yep. it's bigger than just wins and losses. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's bigger than wins. And losses. So when we were exchanging emails back and forth, there was a signature at the bottom on your page and it says love, effort, attitude, and discipline. Coach, that stuck out so much to me because I, I'm I'm a sucker for this. I'm a softie, believe it or not. But explain that to me. Why is that important for you to have on there? Because that's people don't realize that signature. That's someone doesn't know anything about you. They're learning something about you just from that phrase. Explain that to me. Yeah. So uh, I I you know I got that from from a mentor of mine, Levi Nelson. Um, he he has a book actually about the lead philosophy and all this. And uh, I I. And so lucky that I got to coach with him when he was developing that. And I have fully run with it in my life. And um, I'm a big believer in it. But the big thing for us where we leverage it is, hey, we, we talk about controlling the controllables, 
right? So you control your your love for the game, your care for your teammates. You control your effort. You control having a positive mental attitude. You control your discipline of showing up on time and taking care of business, right? We, we can't control the weather on a Friday night. We can't control what the referees want to call and not call, right? But we can control what we can control. And that, that lead philosophy of love, effort, attitude, and discipline is what we, we go back to time and time again. Um, you know, it's in the bottom of all of our signatures. We, we use hashtag lead as much as we can. Um, yeah. You know, and it's something we'll continue to harp. And as kids now learn it year after year, I think it'll, it'll be something we, we embody. Yeah, that mantra to be able to live by that. Your foundation, it's foundational pieces. And that's what you're absolutely trying to do over there as you came in last year. And like you said, this year, kind of having that overhaul. Now, this Friday, though, you guys are heading out to ch- take on Talmadge. Yep. What, what, what's kind of the, um, the coach's thought pattern for yep. Friday night going into that? What would you like to see, coach? Yeah, so the big thing is we talk about all the time, right? You can make mistakes, but don't make mistakes twice, essentially, right? So we, we watched film on Saturday of, of some of the mistakes we made against Indian Valley. My, my, what I kept harping on was, hey, when we're sitting here next Saturday, let's not see those same mistakes against Talmadge, right? Hey, let's fix those little things or whatever the items were, and we're going to be a much better position to win a football game. Um, so that, that's got to be our big thing. Take, take that loss and let's show on film next Saturday when we wake up the next morning that we learned from week one to week two. I, I, I get it. Some of the I should, well, it could be seniors, juniors, or even sophomores. Cause you said you had some going, who are some players right now that you're leaning on that you're, you're saying, Hey, I need you guys to step up and be able to kind of continue to build on these pillars that were going off of with the love, effort, discipline, attitude. And now I need my players to be able to act that out. Who are some of your players that you're really excited to see what they're going to develop into over the coming weeks of the season? Yeah, so so right now we, we've got three three players with captain patches on their jerseys. You know, we'll, we'll keep growing that, hopefully get to five or six. But right now there's three. We've got Isaac McCoy, who plays receiver for us, maybe a little defense moving forward. Um, Brandon Knowles, kind of do-it-all offensive player for us and, and outside linebacker. Um, and then Elijah Griffin, who is, is kind of the captain of our secondary and um, is, our, is our free safety. But those are three guys where um, two, of them are, two of them are juniors, one's a senior. Um, and, and kind of like I keep preaching, right? Hey, if you're going to be a leader and a captain, especially the two juniors, right? Like, yeah. what do you show me from week one to week two? What did you learn about your team from week one to week two? What do we look like today come practice this afternoon? Did we really buy in? Like, we talk about being upset at the end of a football game. Well, you, you need to be, you need to earn being upset at the end of a football game, right? We've all been up around yeah. kids that cry after a loss, whatever it is. I always say, like, you can cry after a loss. You can be upset after a loss if you earned it Monday through Thursday, right? So that's a big thing for us going in this week. Earn being upset after after a game if you lose, or earn being ecstatic after a win. Yeah, I, you know I I got to stop doing these interviews because you guys as coaches do such a great job that I'm ready to go run through a wall. <laughs> I'm serious. I just I know I'm going to wake up tomorrow with a lot of aches and pains. So it's not yeah happening. yeah ready to go. <laughs> but the way that you're saying, I mean, those are I, I'm a big person on big picture things. I think that uh, sports is just a vessel of life, of learning how to be a person, accountable, all those above. So when I hear coaches like yourself and the way that you're going about um, implementing that, it it goosebumps. So coach, continue to keep doing what you're doing. So right before I let you go, what do you want to tell the Ellet faithful as you head into the the season or even this Friday, coach? Yeah, big thing is, again, we need the support, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, but they were laying bricks every hour, right? Like we need to make sure that everybody's on the same page of, if it's not perfect and how you want it right now, that doesn't mean it's not going the right direction. And yeah. we very much are. And there's a lot of people that very much care about this program, care about the community. And I have no doubt. I tell you guys all the time. I am so pumped to be in the position I am in. Um, Cause we have the ability at Ellet to be a really, really good football program year in and year out. Love it. Love it coach. So we wish you nothing but the best this Friday and obviously going into the remainder of the year. Always a friend of our show. Uh, we hope to have you back on again. Thank you so much for taking time out, Coach, to uh, visit with us today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. That was our interview with Elliot Coach. Uh, feel free to tune in when we go live this Friday at 9 a.m., And as always, guys, continue to be nice and kind to everybody out there. We will see you in the comment section.